In this section uh, we wanted to talk about um, the process of semen collection and uh, preservation. In licensed AI centres bulls um, must be free from uh, physical defects and have normal conformation in order to be able to um, continually produce semen and deliver semen consistently over time. Um, licensed centres um, have a, a governed by a series of regulations um, that they must meet um, and so when semen is collected from bulls within these centres um, if they're certified uh, and licensed then the purchaser has a reasonable assurance that that semen will be free from um, venereal diseases. Some of the semen that's produced is also progeny tested and that means that um, it's actually been inseminated into cows and they actually have some data on how fertile that semen is as well. And for most large AI companies they'll be rejecting sires where the semen uh, does not uh, isn't uh, up to a certain standard in terms of fertility. So usually when you purchase semen from licensed centres it should be disease free and hopefully there's some pregnancy rate data already on that semen and so you've got a reasonable assurance that it, that semen will be reasonably fertile. When you start buying beef um, semen from beef bulls it's in less demand so the opportunity for progeny testing is not as great so there's usually less information available for beef breed semen or semen derived from beef breeds. Now you can buy semen that doesn't that wasn't produced in a licensed centre. This is called custom collected or unlicensed semen. The difficulty with this semen is that you can't there's no guarantee of its quality and its disease status. And so um, such uh, semen it's really buyer beware. Um, because you could be importing venereal diseases and you're, and you're really not sure what the, what the fertility of that semen will be. Here are some of the diseases that um, semen centres must test for to ensure that the bulls that they're using in licensed centres are free, free of. So they must be free of quite a number of diseases. Some of these are, for example, tuberculosis, brucellosis, ephemeral fever, uh, blue tongue, um, infectious bovine rhinitis tra tracheitis to name a few. There's many other diseases that can also be transmitted in frozen semen such as foot and mouse disease and, and rinderpest but these are exotic to Australia so they shouldn't be present uh, anyway. How is semen collected? Use, semen is usually collected with an artificial vagina because this yields the most uh, number of sp sperm. You can also collect with an electro ejaculator um, and this is usually done in uh, unlicensed centres where bulls are not trained to mount uh, cows and collect with an artificial vagina. Um, this is just a, a longitudinal section of an artificial vagina. Um, it's lined by usually a latex liner and water is, is infused uh, to provide pressure and temperature and then you have a collecting vessel on the end where the semen is collected and this is usually kept warm uh, and insulated during the process. Bulls are usually collected a number of times a week um, and they'll usually produce anywhere from half a billion up to about four billion sperm per collection and this is enough for between 50 and 200 doses of semen or more if you happen to collect more semen from them. So you can get, as you can see, the number of, if you only need uh, approximately 20-25 million sperm per dose uh, to freeze, um, if you derive four billion sperm then you can produce a lot of straws from that. This is just a quick look at some of the other species and how they're collected. Um, artificial vaginas are used uh, generally for most species uh, if possible. A couple of exceptions are in the pig where, where a gloved hand is used um, to simulate the cervix of a sow. Um, digital stimulation is used in dogs um, as well. Um, but most other species it's artificial vaginas are used or electroejaculation. The number of sperm you need to deposit within the female reproductive tract for normal fertility also varies between species. You can see cattle it's about 10 million. If you look at horses it's about 500 million. Um, if you look at dogs you're looking at more than 200 million, 200 to 300 million uh, to be deposited. So there is some variation between species in how semen is collected and also the number of sperm that you need to deposit into the, into the female of the species. 
if you want to look at more examples of uh, semen collection in different species if you just do a YouTube um, or a search you'll find a number of videos but here's some if you need if you want to click on those you can have a look at semen being collected in a variety of species um, semen once it's collected it needs to be preserved um, in its raw state it won't survive for very long so it's either frozen um, which is the most common form of preservation in cattle or it can be preserved as liquid semen by adding um, certain extenders to it in some circumstances for example in some developing countries semen is actually extended in um, some types of uh, coconut milk extenders um, or um, skim milk based extenders uh, caprogen is a particular chemical that is uh, mixed with liquid semen uh, this is widely used in New Zealand and using the caprogen extension method uh, semen is able to survive in that state for three days uh, or more and this enables the dose of sperm to be reduced so this sperm hasn't been frozen it's just chilled and, it's, and you can reduce the dose to about two million uh, sperm per straw and it will survive for up to 72 hours. Now this is an advantage in some parts of New Zealand where there's a, a seasonal breeding herd. You've got a big demand for semen in a short period of time so you want to spread, there's a big demand for the number of doses so if they were to freeze and thaw the semen you would have you would need a lot more um, semen to meet the demands but by keeping it fresh and preserving it in this cap caprogen liquid extender then um, you can get the dose down to 2 million and that enables um, much more efficient use of the bulls and, and the bulls that they've got can meet the high demands that they have in a short period of time. Um, when we're freezing semen then we need doses of 20 to 25 million sperm. Um, usually uh, on thawing that will provide a minimum of 10 million cells uh, to inseminate into the cow and this is because um, approximately 50% of the sperm are destroyed um, or killed uh, through the freezing and thawing process. Um, when we're preserving semen um, we usually collect the semen uh, from the bull, evaluate its quality, um, what the concentration is, the number of progressively motile and normal sperm. You then extend it in an extender which provides usually a source of energy um, such as fructose, um, egg yolk um, or something similar to egg yolk um, which helps to stabilize cell membranes, helps to buffer the, um, the fluid um, and usually some antibiotics as well to kill bacteria. This semen is then uh, cooled down slowly to about four degrees over about a two hour period. After a couple of hours glycerol which is a cryoprotectant um, it's added um, to the semen um, usually in the form of another extender that's got glycerol in it and both the this extender which is the second part of the extender um, is all is pre-cooled to four degrees Celsius so you're adding the initial uh, extended ejaculate with the cryo preserves second sta stage of the extender to the original extender both at four degrees Celsius it's then packaged into straws it's often left um, for a number of hours to equilibrate um, and then it's either frozen either using a computerized freezer which has a controlled freezing rate or it's usually the straws are placed, placed about four, four centimeters above a pool of liquid nitrogen so that they just slowly freeze in the vapor of the liquid nitrogen over a period of seven to ten minutes and they're then plunged into the liquid nitrogen they're then transferred to a liquid nitrogen tank and stored until they're distributed so it's quite this process has been used successfully um, for the last 30 40 years and it's been quite successful in the bull this is called a two-step cryopreservation method two steps because the first method is, is extension uh, cooling down and then in the second step the uh, cryoprotectant which is glycerol is added to the extender and then um, the straws are frozen semen is usually packaged into uh, quarter mil straws for bovine semen um, sometimes into a half mil straws uh, in, traditionally it was uh, packaged into ampules glass ampules or just pallets that where the semen is frozen on dry ice these methods are not really used very much anymore um, but it's mainly universally the quarter mil straws are used for bovine semen 
This is just illustrating some of the equipment. These are the straws that come in different colours. Different colours can represent different breeds. Um, this is a cooling area where the semen, once it's mixed with an extender, can be cooled down slowly. And then the, the glycerol fraction can be added um, at 4 degrees Celsius. This is a straw printer which prints details on the straws. And this is a computerised freezer where you can um, freeze the straws at a controlled rate. And this is just um, a automated um, um, straw filling unit that um, fills the straws and seals the straws automatically. So having completed this section you should uh, re do what, review what some of the potential risks for using custom collected semen are compared to the semen processed within a licensed breeding centre. List five diseases that could potentially be transmitted in bovine semen. Outline the general steps that are undertaken when processing and freezing bovine semen and you should know how many sperm cells on average would be collected from a single ejaculate from a bull and how many doses of frozen semen could be processed uh, from this. So I'll just leave you to review these questions. Um, please go back through the lecture to find the answers uh, to these questions.